<laughs> There's no three, two, one. Where's the music? Hello, music. Where did Eric go? Can they see us right now? <laughs> so, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing outstanding. Yeah, where did Eric go? <clears throat> there's Bree. Yeah, there's Bree. Can you guys hear me? Oh, I I don't hear any intro music. Oh, it's okay. And I heard it on the live thing, so you should just I don't hear actually just start, you just just start talking. Bree, I, I think you're on mute. You. Okay, she's laughing. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Bree. I don't know I'm what trying. she's laughing at, but I can't can hear a word us? she's saying. I can. Did I? Can you hear us? Yeah. We're making fools of ourselves. Oh, she you can, can hear us. us. Are we live? Yeah. I don't know. Are we live? <laughs> I didn't hear the Hi. intro music. Well, hi everybody. Welcome to Draven's Den. Hi, Chris. Hey, hello. Stan. I am Stan Miles, and this is Chris Hodge Kreitzer. Hello. <laughs> yeah, he said I can't call him Hodge because uh, okay. it sounds really weird coming from me. Because I've known this guy. Um, I've known this guy for what? Since um, freshman year. What year is that? 1991. 19... Oh, wow. Yeah, 91. <laughs> that was um, many, many moons ago. <laughs> so... <laughs> Okay, well, um, we had a couple of uh, uh, technical difficulties, but hey, this is the show. I'm Stan, that's Chris, and that is Draven. Say hi, Draven. Okay, he, he just doesn't talk that much. But uh, on tonight's show, we are going to have Miss Brie Bavon. Yes, I know she pronounces it Bevan, but uh, I, I like Bavon. It sounds very, you know, very exotic. I like that. <laughs> so, and later on, we will be listening and actually seeing a music video. Remember back in the day when MTV actually played music? You know, I remember uh, MTV's 40th anniversary came around and it was like, MTV, thank you for four years of music. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah I, I remember Headbangers Ball. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ricky Rackman and. Uh, when Motley Crue did Decade of Decadence in 89. Primal Scream. Primal, primal Scream. Yes, Primal Scream. <laughs> okay, okay. Let me uh, let me move on to things a little bit. So um, Chris is going to give us some rundowns on uh, some local music happening soon this month real quick. Take it away, Chris. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Chris, I think there's people in that box watching you right Hi, now. Hi, box. How are you doing? Um, I don't know. I had stuff for what I, we were going to do. Okay, so what up. are you going to do? Okay, well, you want to dice all the dates? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. All right, Chris, well, it's, it's you. Tuesday, September 14th at the Rec Center, we'll be there with Ambulance Review and Aaron Incoherent from Philadelphia. That'll be cool. Um, followed by Saturday, October 2nd at the Troll Market. That will also be with Brianna, how'd you say it? Bavon? No, Bavon. Evan. <laughs> and Jenna Cole will be among the ones playing. Uh, our producer will be running the sound for that. That'd be pretty cool. Is that what we call him? Producer, well, sound guy. Who's cool our guy. Who's our producer? What's his name? Eric. Eric. Eric Coon. You know him. <laughs> well, I thought you knew him too. Is it Cluxon? Eric Cluxon. Yes. I did get it right. Yay! FXBG okay. Public Radio. Oh lord. Oh okay. Um, Saturday, October twenty third, we're playing in Ashland at the Red Vane Haunted House. Uh, that should be cool. And then followed by back to the rec center on the 29th. It's going to be our, our Halloween show. Friday, October 29th. That's with the Goodbye Forevers, Torino Death Bride, Brianna Bevan, and the Get Off from Richmond. Bavon. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, no oh man. Saturday, November 6th. Oh my gosh. We're going to be at the Curtiba Cafe. If I'm saying that right, if not, I apologize. And then in, on Wednesday in December on the 8th, 
will be playing the uh, monthly Women Crush Wednesday or WCW, uh, not to be confused with the failed wrestling company, uh, at the Camel in Richmond. Right on. With Ricky Rocky and Music Riva. Riva? Who knows? Hi. That's all I really got. I mean, there's music all the time and karaoke going on. And I mean, like the Colonial Taverns, they sure bet to find music going on there all the time in the in town, as well as actually the Rec Center. They do, they're getting ready to do a speed dating event coming up. I don't remember the date, but it's on their website, on their Facebook page. How's that? Maybe I can work with him more often. Wait, wait, you you stopped me at speed dating. What what is speed dating like in, in 2021? It's like very fast. Very, I don't know. Is it faster than it was in 2020? I mean, think about it, because now you got half the population that you know are maskers, and then you have other population that's non-maskers. And um, I mean, because that's what we're we're called now. We're called non-maskers. And then you got the maskers, and then you got the I vaxxed and the that. unvaxxed. Um because we're like all divided and stuff but um so yeah i mean i guess you have to it's gonna be really hard to hear them oh i like long walks on the beach and uh kendall at dinner yeah okay all right and uh on top of that we got the moon uh let's see i love the 90s store okay i do have to mention this at the fred fred nats um park located right behind central park um okay check this line out up we've got Vanilla Ice, 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 baby. I know you're all doing that. Okay, we got All for One, Coolio, okay. Kid and Play, and Tone Loke. Ticket prices is $30, $40, $50, $60, $70, $70 and $100. So definitely, if you are a child of the 90s and uh, you liked any of them, I definitely suggest going to check out that at Fred Nat Stadium. Okay, so I really wanted to bring that up, and that's the last um, upcoming event that I'll mention right now, uh, because I have a story about Tone Loke. Okay. Okay. So, as some of you guys know, I went to Drew Middle School, and I don't know if you'll remember or not, but I was struck very hard with bronchitis. And when, after the initial, you know, hit, I came back to school, I had my antibiotics and everything. I sounded exactly like Tone Look. Now, remember, you had that real deep, froggy voice. Mm -hmm. And everybody wanted me to sing Funky Cold Medina. <laughs> <laughs> I could not remember a word of it right now, but I swear to you, because I wanted to be a popular sixth grader, I went home and memorized the song. I, I mean, I was like, jammed it. And all the girls were like, oh, look out, Tone Look. So yeah, so <laughs> funky cold Medina. <laughs> um, all right, so without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest who has ever been so patiently waiting on top of Draven's head, um, Miss Brie Bavon. Bevan Bavon. Uh, I'm just gonna go with Bavon. Is that okay? Yeah. Do you want me to unmute? So, uh, hi. Hi. Um, we are definitely having a technical difficulty right now, so we're not going to be able to hear Bree. So, Bree, do you, do you know sign language? No? Okay. Can, can, um, can Eric hear me, or is it just you guys who can't hear me? <laughs> okay, so can they, um, uh, can they see the chat? Because I can just type what I'm saying while I'm saying it. I, uh, I hope they can hear you. Because <laughs> I can't even remember. Oh, she's going to type. That's awesome. Yeah. So, that is awesome. Um, Thank you. So you the, know, she the, is a thinker. Audience... She's a thinker and a doer. That's a whole movie. <laughs> okay, the audience can hear her. So she is going to, uh, she's going to type for us. Mm -hmm. Us, because we can't. Okay, Bree, thank you so much for coming on the first episode of Draven's Den. And um, I guess first, what I want to know is what got you into music? You know, what uh, what was the spark? <laughs> I'm going to have to type this and talk. Um, so I, I got into music from my dad. 
Uh, let's see if I can. There we go. Um, and he was really uh, into the Beatles. Sorry, you guys are. They're getting like a weird stunted version of this, but so he's really into the Beatles. He um, taught me a lot of instruments. I went and played uh, viola, uh, which is kind of a random instrument to play. And um, then I hated it and started playing guitar. So um, I am going to type this to them so they know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, th there we go. So, okay, he taught, um, taught a lot of instruments. To me, I played viola, then moved to guitar. There we go. Um, so, um, on top of that, I had stage fright. There we go. Um, so then I didn't play uh, on stage until I was like 35, something like that. There you go. <laughs> do that, do this when you're, when, you, when, you, okay. Okay. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> um, well that, um, well, that was actually oh, part of the story that I read, um, uh, right. when you had sent that quick blurb for me to post on the Facebook page and I, I really loved that story um, about how you overcame stage fright. And you said that there was something that happened, I want to say, in 2018. And I really wish I could hear you right now. So I, I don't want to get you know too personal or anything. If you want to tell us, that's great. If you don't, that's okay, too. Um, okay. So er do, yes. yes or, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, cool. Eric will type um, for me. <laughs> yeah, so Eric said he would he would try to transcribe this for me. So um, I'll try not to be as wordy as I am. Okay. So I had a kid in 2015, um, and it was uh, very traumatic, and that I had um, postpartum depression, and I went through a period of wanting to unalive myself, and. Um, finally I started coming out of that and realizing that part of the reason I was so sad was that I was trying to be this, like, perfect mom. Um, and then I realized that there was all these things that I was afraid of and I wasn't doing because I was afraid of not being perfect. And that I didn't want my kid to see me live that way. Um, so I wanted to have like show her that I can do hard, scary things and I'm not going to be perfect and it's okay to mess up. Um, and so I just went to an open mic in 2018 and it was terrible. Um, so, uh, but I loved it. And then I just kept going back and I got better and I got less scared. I'm still scared. I still shake and sometimes I want to throw up. Um, but yeah, it, uh, it helped me to realize something that I wanted to do since I was like 14, 15 years old and it took 20 years to get there. But yeah. So. Guess what? <laughs> Guess what? We can hear you now. <laughs> you can hear me! Yay! Okay. okay. I missed all of that. So. Okay. <clears throat> um, I don't so, know why you can hear me, but that's awesome. Well, well, what happened, um, and, and, and I will be completely, completely honest. Um, so while we were trying to test everything out in the beginning, um, Chris leaned over and he hit the mute button Chris on my did laptop. Not do anything. No, you hit the mute button. <laughs> Chris told okay, me well, um, he, hit, he hit the mute button. No, I didn't. Um, on the uh, <laughs> on the um, laptop. <laughs> He's gonna shove me in a locker. <laughs> All right. that's, that's okay. I, I borrowed my husband's work laptop for, no, I was in his office and I muted his laptop and he had an important business call with his boss the next day and they both thought that all their stuff was broken and it was just that I had muted his computer because it kept chiming every 15 minutes. So <laughs> it's all right. It happens to all of us. So you guys heard that it was basically postpartum depression uh, led me into um, doing all the things I was scared of, which is a bunch of stuff. Uh, restructured my business. I 
I play more music. Um, I write a lot of music now. So just trying to show my kid, you know, that it's okay to mess up. You do it very well. I play very uh, Try. Well, um, so tell me about WCW, the and and not the the failed wrestling. Um, <laughs> yeah, please don't, please don't make me talk about wrestling because I, I mean, my brothers wrestled and they watched all of the wrestling stuff, but I got nothing on it. Um, so Women Crush Wednesday was started after I um, began playing shows around town, and I'm lucky enough to have most of the people I surround myself with be awesome people, and they don't care who you are. If they like your music, you know, they're going to book you. Um, I had a couple bad experiences of um, not getting paid for shows because I wouldn't uh, go out with the person who booked me after they had already promised to pay me. Okay. And, um, yeah, that's not really my thing. Uh, so um, I was pretty upset about that. And I talked to one of my other friends who's a woman musician, and she relayed some anecdotes that happened to her and then another one and then another one. And then, you know, I was just like, well, why aren't we all just playing shows together? Like, none of us are going to mess with each other. Like, let's just play some shows together. And they're like, no, nah, nobody will book us as a full, uh, you know, line of women. And I was like, I'll do it. <laughs> so I just, I started it and um, found a couple places who were, you know, willing to let us have their stage. Um, and started out not being able to pay people to play. It was just a showcase. Um, and then just relying on tips. Um, and then we've gone from that to now playing at uh, kind of one of the only clubs left in Richmond, uh, the Camel. <laughs> so we charge ticket prices. Uh, you know, we have um, we have pre-sale for tickets now. We have at the door. People can still tip. There's like space for merch. Um, there's networking because they get to meet the people who work at the Camel, and they get to meet like the Booker and the sound guy. So. Possibly they get more connections with that. Um, we've had connections between just a person showing up in the audience, liking what they heard, and now they're like the basis for one of our acts. And um, it's happened a couple times. So bands have formed just from people coming to the show. So it's kind of all I wanted it to be, just a community and uh, a fun, safe space. And, you know, people are going to get paid. They don't have to go on dates with me. <laughs> Yeah, I you know, there's a reason that the the entertainment industry has the has the reputation it does, and uh, there's you know uh, there's bad seeds in every batch, you know. Yeah. You can't let those bad seeds, you know, bad apples spoil the whole damn bunch. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. And there's been so many like, um, I've had guys come to play, and they're like, like, are we allowed to? play bass and like whatever uh, lead guitar I'm like yeah I don't hate men like I love men like they're my friends I you know I got two brothers I'm married like it's you know it's cool I like guys like I just there's the bad apples that, <laughs> that right. we don't right. like so right. yeah um so yeah it's you know there's there's a lot of good people out there um you know Hodre over there he uh I don't even know why he likes my music like it's <laughs> He just wants to book me for things. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll play anything. I don't care. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know you have um, graced us with one of your songs, and I believe it's called Pop, Plot Twist. Mm -hmm. So you want to set the song up a little bit, or should we just um, I don't know. I guess it's just about um, something happening to you that you really wanted to happen. And then it wasn't as good as you thought it was going to be. And you're just like, oh, well, well, oh, well, moving on. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I that was kind of like how I envisioned my adult life would be. So, yeah, it didn't quite turn out the way the brochure said it was going to. Yeah. I, I, I didn't meet exotic women and travel the world and, you know, actually, no, that's not true. I did meet an exotic woman. Yeah. That's yeah. Okay, so I got that part, but I didn't travel the world yet. And <laughs> there's still time. There's still time. Mm -hmm. So um yeah, some of the places I want to go. But anyhow, all right. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, 
We are going to listen to Plot Twist by the wonderful Brie Bavon. Plot Twist by the wonderful Brie Bavon. You can find her at the Camel in Richmond. When was that again, Chris? When we're doing? Yeah. Oh, that's December 8th. December 8th. There's one in October and November, too. Yeah. yeah um, so I have, I'm playing no, September 11th at Curitiba, which is what you guys were trying to say earlier. Yeah. And I want to... Yeah, <laughs> Curitiba. And then I'm playing um, October. When is Troll Market? Second? Yes. October yeah. 2nd. October 2nd. And then I have October 29th with you again. Is yeah. that? At the Rec Center. Rec Center. Oh, um, yeah. And I also have October 13th at the Camel. I just do the opening for Women Crush Wednesday, but we have a great lineup that night. Um, November is actually a little hairy right now because apparently a TV show might want to use the camel for filming. So we might get bumped, <laughs> but that's okay. I get it. Um, and then um, December 8th, we have our show with Puffy. Yeah. And um, I'll play like a couple songs at the beginning of that just to let the crowds, you know, straggle in. Um, but yeah, it should be a good rest of the year. So. You know, I'm 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 actually over here cracking up because uh, 
<laughs> as as she's talking and she's asking you questions, she's trying to make eye contact with you. Because <laughs> <laughs> no. like like she's doing it. She's she's looking. Yeah, oh, I'm just like looking. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, I am a very big on eye contact when I am in person with people. So like when I'm on Zoom, it's very disconcerting because I can't just look at the screen because it's just my me. I'm looking at me. So. <laughs> well, well, how many? Okay, real quick. In in um, we're we're gonna we're gonna roll on a little bit. But um, so you're real big on eye contact. Mm-hmm. How many times have you had to say eyes up here, pal? Eyes up. Uh, here. <laughs> not really like i mean no no not even so much, i'm really short so like <laughs> yeah so like i think it's just easier to look in my eyes <laughs> i'm really short so fair enough I'm five fair four enough. and like i only know one guy who's my height um and he's like the politest nice nicest guy so he, he would never have to say that to him but um like all the guys that i know are like six foot so they're just looking at the top of my head anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. Well, uh, you did get a message from Grand Old Colorado from Michelle Solser. Uh, uh, Michelle, I'm going to say your first name and your maiden name because I have never in all these years been able to pronounce your married last name. So instead of butchering it, Michelle Solser says, uh, nice song and inspiring story. Oh, thank you. So that uh, that's from michelle in colorado well brie i will not keep you any longer than i've already cap- captured captured captivated yeah the list. sure yeah sure it sounds good <laughs> but thank you so much again for being on the show and uh this is this has gone down in history mm-hmm. well so. thanks guys and i wish you luck on all the future episodes let me know if you need uh need some people because i know lots of them so I will definitely follow up with you on that. So okay. it's all about the local music. Um, I mean, you know, there's going to be a lot of rambling and randomness, but uh, I definitely want to try to spotlight, you know, some folks that don't get an opportunity to get their name out there that often because yeah. there's a lot, a lot of great talent in Fredericksburg. And as Eric, uh, Eric's motto, um, make Fredericksburg create again, you know, and all of you guys are very inspiring. Um you know, you go through your own hurdles in life, and then you you step up. You step up on stage. You get behind the bright lights or in front of the bright lights, and um, you help people develop dreams that eventually come true. So, bravo, Bree, and mm-hmm. doing what you're doing. Uh, well, thank you, guys. Have a good night. Thanks for having me. All right, you too. You Talk to you later. All right, guys, so we're going to roll on a little bit. And next up, we're going to talk about some crazy headlines that uh, I have come across. Uh, I'm not going to get into the full stories, but I will talk a little bit about the headlines. Um, So this one is Department of Ridiculous Corrections. Journalists and editors on deadline make the occasional error. Some are funnier than others. NBC reporter that reported that American students rank internationally at... 26th, 26th math, 21st science, and 17th in reading. Did you get that? 21st. Yeah, there's a there's a TH there. So Britain Sky News showed the importance of punctuate punctuation. Top stories. World leaders at Mandela Tribute, Obama Castro handshake, and same-sex marriage date. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, A reaction from Wired. A previous version of this story incorrectly quoted Dropbox co-founder Drew Houston saying, anyone with nipples instead of anyone with a pulse. Hmm. All right. (laughs) Um, See, first microbes breathed sulfur before it was cool. Wow, man. Why couldn't I breathe sulfur first? You know, isn't you it? visit a lot more places that way. <laughs> what I hear in science. And that was the Washington Post. Stolen prosthetic arm. Stolen prosthetic arm discovered in a secondhand shop. I feel like David Letterman. I, I like want to, you know, and toss a card over my shoulder. That was from the Daily Echo in England. Um, Marshall County Sheriff's candidate, candidate, candidate. 
Marshall County Sheriff's candidate disputes report of own death. That was in Huntsville, Alabama. Wow. Well, hey, I mean, we know dead people get up and vote, so why not report dispute your own death? Ow! Hold the presses! Misadventures in headline writing from around the world. City unsure why the sewer smells. Yeah. That's the sewer? <laughs> what goes down there? Uh, see, that was the Herald Palladium in St. Joseph, Michigan. Case of innocent man freed after spending 18 years in prison. All right. Hmm. So the case of innocent man. So I guess that was his case. They freed his case. They did. Yeah, they did. Okay. And last but certainly not <laughs> least. All right. That's where I'll find some better ones next time. Yeah. But I have been saving this because I'll tell you what, some of the craziest, craziest things happen in Florida. I mean, you had zombies eating people a few years back. Uh, what was that? Um Bath salts. Bath salts yep. Yeah, when that came out, there was a dude eating somebody's ear or something. All right, this came from the Miami Herald. An iguana wearing a bandana attacked a man in Miami because 2020 isn't weird enough. Hey, man, you got flies? I want your flies, man. What, you not, you not give me your flies? Oh, I tell you what, man. <laughs> <laughs> But can you imagine that? An iguana. He's like, jumps up on your fence. And he's wearing a bandana. I mean, I don't know. Crips, Bloods, I don't, I, I don't know. Oh, um, right. Blue, red. Uh, you know, and just like, jumps at you. What would you do, Chris? If you were in your backyard flipping a burger? And... Middle of your pie, Joe. Yeah. Whoa. That's it? I, I don't know after that. <laughs> this would have to happen. I can get an iguana. All right. Well, if you know what you would do if an iguana wearing a bandana attacked you in your backyard, send me an email at dravensden at gmail.com. It's D R A V I N S D E N at gmail.com. And it is D R A V I N, not E N. A lot of people like to say E N because no one's really a huge fan of the crow and they should all be ashamed of themselves. And yes, that's where Draven got his name, was the crow, Eric Draven. Yes, Eric Draven. Great, great movie. Great Loved graphic. it. Loved it a lot. Great soundtrack. Yeah. So there was um, a couple of things that happened this week. Um, I want to get your, get your input on, Chris, as soon as I find it in my notes. Um, okay, well... <sighs> All right, so my listeners and, and Chris, um, you guys can input on the Facebook live video feed about this. I'm going to work, and there's this little Honda, I guess it was, Honda, Hyundai. I don't know. I can't tell the difference. I drive a Jeep. Um, I mean, loud. It sounded like a popcorn popper hooked up to like 220 volts of raw popping power. And it was going like half a mile an hour. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I I don't think I've ever heard a car so loud in my life. And it sounded like a popcorn popper, you know, and just going half a mile an hour. So that was. Um, and the driver didn't seem bothered. Just, no, no, here. no. I, I guess he was nothing here. jamming nothing to Jiffy Pop see. or something. I don't. That is a band, isn't it? Jiffy Pop. Which one? Jiffy Pop. Is that, is that like a band? Well, there's Iggy Pop. There's Iggy Pop. Well, no, Iggy Pop would not be. He would know. No, I doubt he even drives anymore. But. Let's find out. All right. So next up in our world of randomness and craziness and, yes. and all sorts of fun stuff, we are going to get a little bit more into Mr. Chris Kreitzer, also oh, known as Hodge, his background. Uh, again, known this gentleman since freshman year of Stafford High School, and um, he's always been a great friend. Don't listen to me right now. I'm getting sappy. Okay. He, he's been a great friend, um, you know, through the darker freshman years. Uh, he was always there saying, hi, how are you? Hello. So, Chris. Okay. Yes. 
thank you again for coming on the show and um, and you know hanging in there with my my uh, uh, intuitive sarcasm okay. <laughs> um, so I know we hung out a little bit back in, back in the freshman year and, and um, you were telling a story when we were kind of practicing the other day um, about the first time you ever went to my house. Yes. Uh, yeah. What was, tell, tell, tell that story again. Oh, it's just a friend and I uh, rode our bikes. You know, it's, it's a big deal to be leaving the neighborhood kind of like that age, something like that. And just, he wanted to come see you. And I was like, oh, okay. I get to see Stan outside of school and came over and you were, I guess, in the middle of washing dishes or something and blasting Iron Maiden's Seven Sun album. Up the irons. I remember that's actually the first time I really listened to Evil That Men Do and appreciated it. I usually had skipped over at the time on the cassettes because we had cassettes, of course. Oh, dude, don't date us. Oh, right. Yeah, some of these crazy kids. Yeah. These crazy kids wouldn't know what a cassette was if it freaking dropped out of the sky and bumped them on the head. And that's true. I've seen that. <laughs> the kid was okay after a few days. <laughs> That was some heavy music, dude. That's why they call it heavy metal. It was. Yes, absolutely. That's all it was. Yeah. Well, it how made. how did you get into your um, wanting to play music? Like, you know, what was your first instrument? Um, how did you learn? What What was your, your uh, music background? Uh, it was just, uh, I don't know, maybe seven, eight, you know, nine years old, like that. Uh, piano, piano lessons started out at... Uh, Yamaha downtown, um, and then some piano teacher, and then from there got into trombone, and then my mother had a guitar, started learning that, and with another guy in the neighborhood, Nathan Cavanaugh, you know, and he was playing guitar, so we talked to somebody needed a bass player, and I actually do like the tones of bass. Uh, I was watching, speaking of Iron Maiden, their uh, you know, the Live After Death video. Oh yeah, and it's when they get in, it's the middle section. It has to be the live version of "Rhyming Ancient Mariner" when they start to bring the song back up. Steve Harris, the bassist, starts doing that really high part, mm -hmm. and I'm of course in the room going, "What's that?" Where everyone else is talking about the guitars and the drums, and I like the tones of this instrument. And those were actually in the same kind of tones that later on start to appreciate with uh, Joy Division and The Cure. And stuff like that that the the post-punk at times new wave approach to bass playing you know tend to play more of the, the melodies or counter melodies to the vocals things like that but it all started there with that video and that version of rhyme of the ancient mariner for the, right for the bass yeah and iron maiden has some of the best videos they didn't come out with many of them you they know but, but when the they are good yes when yeah. they really new album tomorrow Yes, new album tomorrow, and don't ask me to pronounce the name of it because I'm because I'm I'm not Japanese. Um, if you haven't noticed, I do have two percent Asian in me though. Um, yeah, because back in the '80s, I remember when the whole animation and music video. You know, I I think what was was it Peter Great Gabriel's Sledgehammer? Was that the first one with the stop motion? Yes, with the stop motion, the claymation, I guess you would call it. At times, there was also stop motion in it. There was claymation in, in it as well. Okay. I don't know if it was the first one of its kind, but right. obviously it was one of the big ones. That would be that would be probably the first one that I remember. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, you had Phil Collins yes. um, came in with um, the puppeteering. Uh, what to access. Access. Right. Land of Confusion? Land of Confusion. Yes. That was a great, great, great song. It was. Uh, good video, and actually, the puppeteering was headed up by none other than Jim Henson. Did not know that. Yes, cool. yes. Well, he was the puppet master. <laughs> was. That movie series is based on him. total Metallica drop there. Right. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, he was the puppet master. So, um, if by I, and I know I totally forgot to mention why Chris is so important to this show right now. He is the basis for Puff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's P U F F. One, yeah. One of. What's that? One of. One of. One of the bases. Did you just say one of? I thought you said the bassist. Okay, no, sorry. I thought bassist, B A S I S. Oh. Wait, I'm not the bassist, but the bassist, yes. Yeah, bassist. I'm not sorry. sorry. I, I didn't. Uh, didn't I'm, not hearing, I'm not hearing everything through here, but it's okay. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay. 
Oh, geez. Sorry. Yeah, I, I can't. Yeah, we're, we're going to work on that. But yeah, so he's the bassist for Puff Yeah. Um, and when I first heard the band name, I mean, Go you know ahead. where my mind went to. But it's actually a funnier story of how the band name came together. And I was really hoping to get Monster, the originator of the band. She She's the one that created the band. Is that correct? We done it like together. She came with the name though. Yes. Okay. It okay. actually started off being Holy Puff, if I remember correctly, for a moment. Not anything as far as no, there were no shows or anything done with that. We switched it over to Puff, yeah. Okay. So now you would immediately it substitutes th for the F word. Uh, there you go. Is that what you're wondering? Yes. Okay, yes. Yeah, no. So at least that was my understanding. Yes. I'm sorry if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well. um, yeah, I mean that's, but no, you, you there was something else you were saying about that, about why she substituted the. Oh, yeah, I'd heard the reason of it was to do with like saying it's around kids. I'm looking like she's going to answer me right now. To uh, not be cursing. Is that? I guess. Monster, is that correct? Oh yeah, if she's going to comment. Maybe. If, if or at least like... a reason I'd heard. I'm sure there's probably more than one reason. But... Right. Um okay, well, while we're waiting for Monster to to verify, uh verify that. Um so Michelle, let's see, Chris, she didn't know you played piano. That's true. Yes. He was the he he was the original piano man. Oh yeah, right. That's what it was. <laughs> ah Miss Kristen Monster Bone Crusher. She Thank said, you. Yep. So I mean, you know. How many of you guys is being moms? Um, oh, hi, Monster, by the way. Nice to somewhat meet you. Great video. I loved it. I think I think the cat should be wearing that inflatable Tyrannosaurus Rex costume, but, you know, just a suggestion for the future. Um, but how many of you moms, uh, you know, you, you stub your toe or you burn, burn the casserole or you uh, smack your your knuckle with a wrench, you know, under the hood. Um, how many of you wanted to just blurt out the F word? A lot, I imagine, because I know, yeah, I'm sure you would. Uh, but yeah, puff, yeah. So instead of dropping the F bomb, she just yells puff. You know, so the kid kiddo doesn't, uh, doesn't learn the F word yet. Unfortunately, there will come a day. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. but um so yes the video mm -hmm. we actually have since we were talking so much about music videos um yes. oh it's a, and michelle loves the song t-rex so you have a new fan monster chris nice. I already heard it okay cool thank yeah. you yeah yeah you have a new fan mm -hmm. um so is there a setup to the to the video um what it's about and i mean oh, it's uh the uh keyboard player tofu uh has a cat named t-rex and that's the cat in the video uh didn't require much to you know didn't have to, well what did i say it was a small fee to get t-rex to be in the video <laughs> appreciate the help <laughs> showed up and then wish i hadn't colored my eyebrows but, uh, <laughs> we'll see, but. It's why song. it's actually the yeah it was uh that's the first song we had done on the other people puff yeah monster had come up with the initial riff and melodies and everything and then we just filled in around her tofu and i and then john Pidel, our drummer jay goth he don't like that he, he he doesn't like that. It's a joke. Time Jay Goth. Okay. There's well, no real story to it other than it was like it was brought off of a um, interview done in the paper. Though it was for the Monster solo album to, uh, called Trash, and I guess it was uh, he was talking about the influences of us, and I think it was meant to be that they were supposed to say that to me, but they said it to John that he was the Gothic influence. Oh, but I did get the new wave and synth uh, uh, electronic music. Thank you. <laughs> Loving up 
over here left and right. <laughs> no, dude. No, 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 no. You're fine. Just say uh, Chris had a little bit of uh, nerves, but I don't get it. I mean, this you're, is water. You're, you're on stage. You're on stage. Okay, on stage. You got the lights on you. Yes. You, you've memorized all these chords, and Child. I'm sure you get pre-show jitters, you know. Yes, that happens. Um, I'll, I'll indulge in a, a beer or two then for shows. I don't drink much otherwise. Right. Right. All right. But, you know, I mean, this is just chilling around the table. Oh, and, no. uh, I, I'm actually fine here, too. It's just this is, uh, for me, I guess, it's playing music is different. Performing either or in karaoke throughout the years, same thing. Using it to try to teach myself to sing better. Oh, this guy has a great, and phenomenal voice. He really not does. like him, though. But, but um, what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you no, it seems like it's like it's the first time really being on a like podcast like this, right? And talking, I guess it's different to be talking about myself or about others and not want to get things wrong, I guess. But okay. I, it's okay. I mean, I, I realize it's all worry for nothing now that I'm on here, it's all good, but yeah, it's different for me. I, I'd rather, I guess, be playing, no, okay, and talking, but I'm getting used to this. This is cool. Right on. I'll probably be back. Well, oh, he'll he'll definitely be back. That's okay, that's uh, back. yeah. So Mandy Evans from West Virginia, uh, we were talking about the F word earlier. She said it's one of my favorite four letter F words. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> and you know Mandy Evans, um, her maiden Hi. name is Ice. Mandy Ice, ah, remember hello. Mandy? Yes, 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 yes. One of our favorite favorite people in the world because Mandy is awesome, as Mandy has told me many times. <laughs> <laughs> no 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 great people great people um so what we're going to do is we are actually going to show you puff yaz t-rex and yes they did do a music video just like the old the old school mtv mm -hmm. um man you know what i wish I, I wish we had a tv station we could just have music videos again like good ones like this one like should be coming up any moment now. <laughs>
Hey, so that was T Rex by Puff Yeah. Puff Yeah. I man, I loved it. I, I loved the the very retro vibe to it, and just okay. how enormous the cat was. <laughs> Hard to control that cat sometimes. Truly, really see where the name T Rex comes from. Really, it is a really big cat. I thought it was just the way it is. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean the um, the arms were proportionately you know long, so unlike a T Rex, unlike a T Rex, right, but right, maybe right, it was right. a crossbreed, probably right. some maybe with a, some Rex in there. Definitely not a pterodactyl. I mean, yeah, like, no, definitely not. Cat. Yeah, definitely not a pterodactyl. But um, no, it's like I was saying earlier. I I maybe if y'all do a, a second one like a T Rex part two, um, you could put the inflatable um, inflatable T Rex. Uh, costume on the cat. You think that would work? I'll run it by him. See what happens. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Got to get got the cat's okay. In mind for videos, but yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I was. Um. I I wish we had Monster on here. She'd kind of give a little bit more backstory. Um. But in the future, we can bring her on if she would like to be on, and uh, and talk about you know the t-rex and and that is that is her cat right tofu's cat that's or tofu's cat might be her son's cat i don't know but it's tofu's family yes tofu's family the keyboardist the keyboardist okay all right so um just real quick the name behind tofu i mean is it obvious because she likes tofu vegetarian or vegan or something like that yeah oh. sorry i don't know which one sorry don't hurt me <laughs> That's what I'm thinking it is. I hope I didn't get that wrong. Don't kill the bassist. Ah, cool. Monster says she's down. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Good stuff. Good stuff. And okay. Bassist is dead. What? No, I'm just kidding. What? Ah! No. <laughs> um. So in future future episodes, like as we're kind of getting this whole thing together, um, there's going to be a segment called WTAF. Uh, Killer Tofu is her derby name. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yes. Um, the clown. <laughs> Did the makeup. So, yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, so, yeah, WTAF. TAF. Um, I will not say on air what uh, what that means, just because it's, we're keeping it family-friendly-ish. But if anything actually strikes you throughout the week um, that it, you're just like, what the actual blank, you know, that just makes you look like a, a very confused Scooby-Doo. Write it down in an email and send it to dravensden at gmail.com. And I will read it on the air because I want to hear what makes people, you know, cock their head over like, uh, what? Yeah, what the actual. Um, yeah, so the show is going to metabolize. Metabolize? Metabolize? Is that the word you're going for? Mandy, you're like medical. Metastas metastasize is that the word mandy bueller bueller no okay <laughs> anyway it's going to grow um it's going to change forms it's going to be random a lot of people ask me said you know stan why don't you stick with one topic I said because i don't want to talk about one thing non-stop every week True. you know I just yeah uh yes paranormal yeah, go ahead October, right? She said not cancer. Not cancer, okay. No, no, the show, not cancer. Jeez. Um, <laughs> um, so in the month of October, as long as a lot of you guys know, I have a background in paranormal. Um, I had ran Paranormal Porch with a lot of great people. And um, unfortunately, the show never took off. But we did do a few investigations. Um, metamorphosis. Thank you, Mandy. Um, we did do a few investigations. I have been called a few times in the middle of the night uh, because, you know, a bump in the night just bumped a little bit too loud. So, and a couple of folks have come to me to learn some of the tricks of the trade. Um but yeah, so in the month of October, every episode, I will be featuring a story about one haunted location. And hopefully by then we have our 1-800 web at, yeah, one number set up and you guys can call into Zoom and tell your own ghost stories 
and um and i'll give you my two cents if you want it if you don't then just say i don't want your two cents you know so it's just like that and we will be doing a lot of other cool stuff um but stay tuned to the draven's den podcast page for what's coming up next thursday and um so you guys will know a little bit about that so i wanted to end the show with a thought i i saw a very very cool movie with hugh jackman um not too long ago and in the very beginning of the movie he his mind he did a short monologue and it's something that's kind of personal to me because you know just on a personal note i spent most of my life living in the past uh literally to the point to where it feels like 1989 90 91 was not as long ago as it was and uh it prevented me from moving forward and experiencing a lot of life you know and i don't want that for anyone i think you guys should take every opportunity to you know do that unthinkable thing that thing you never thought you could do um get on stage do a podcast, you know, um, make a, make a TV series, you know? Um, so this monologue again, really hit me and I want to read it to you. The past can haunt a man. That's what they say. And the past is just a series of moments. Each one perfect, complete, a bead on the necklace of time. The past doesn't haunt us. Wouldn't even recognize us. If there are ghosts to be found, it's us who haunt the past. So take that, swish it around in your swishers, and um, and maybe it'll give you an epiphany like it gave me. So to infinity and beyond, yada, yada, yada. All right, we are out of here, guys. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in. Uh, be sure to be here same bad time same bad channel we are out